Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the Crown of Imara, which is a double rondelle game where players are the nobles of the land trying to make the lives of the citizens better. And I'm going to be showing you how it works today in a solo run through, although before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you have done so, well then, welcome to the Kingdom of Imara, which has two boards, the city and the countryside. Each one of these is a rondelle that we will be traveling around to gather resources and use those resources for various and sundry things. And like I said right up front, we are trying to make the lives of citizens better, but actually this game is very pro-immigration. We're trying to make the country so um, you know friendly to the common folk that we will increase immigration, which is what this tracks. As we climb higher and higher and higher, we are getting more immigrants into Amara because Amara realizes that immigration is a net good. It's a net positive for society. Sorry, I don't want to go down a political rabbit hole, but suffice to say, I really love the theme of this game because it's interesting. At the end of the game, you are judged on two metrics. How um, great you've made life so that immigrants will move in and also how much housing you have provided uh, because the lower of those two will be your final score because it doesn't do any good to have tons and tons of immigrants moving in if they've got no place to live. And interestingly, as part of setup, you always set your starting uh, you know, citizen level at zero. And you can set the housing level. At, the game, I think, by default, recommends 35, but you can set it at different levels. And interestingly, at the top of the event deck, we are supposed to take the first card. And um, if you want to, you can use it as a setting for what the housing is supposed to be. So I should have set it at 25. Also, this is showing where my starting city councilor is, or my countryside councilor on the stone space and the uh, city one on the church space. So that's just how you set up. We're not. This is not going to be our first event. This is, we just use this for setup stuff. Now, since I'm playing solo today, it's a little bit different because I do have a competitor, and the competitor only worries about this, and they don't have to worry about housing, and they will be earning points starting from the second round through to the sixth round, and they earn a lot of points. So what the game suggests you do is the first time you play the solo game, start at 40. If you beat them, um, your next time you play, go to 35, and then 30, and then 25. All ultimately, to see if you can beat the uh, the dummy player. Uh, so, I'm taking the advice and starting at 40, which means in this game, I have to focus more on the citizenry and less on the housing. But if I had less housing to begin with, I it would make the game much more challenging because I'd have to focus on both a bit more equally. All right, so anyway, we've got that set up. We've got the board set up with a whole bunch of advisors that are available to us. And also, I started out, out here in the... Uh, countryside on the stone, so I start with one stone. And we are ready to play. Now, I'm doing a solo run through today because uh, Amara is really a very multiplayer, solitaire style game. There's really no direct interaction between players at all. Other than being the first to grab these cottages out in the countryside, that's about it. And honestly, with two individual rondelles that I'm trying to keep track of, I didn't want my head to explode by trying to emulate two full players. Plus, a lot of folks like to see how the solo works. So, we're just going to play solo, but trust me, as a two-player game, it plays almost exactly the same. So, how does it play? Well, we've got a little reminder right here. At the beginning, um, I am going to play an action card and then perform the action, its movement action, its card action, and then potentially bonus actions. I'm going to do that three times and then the round is over. I know I'm doing it three times because I've got to draw at the beginning of the round three cards. These are going to be the three cards I'm going to play from my shuffled up deck of nine actions. If I was playing with another player, they would also draw three cards. Chances are they'd be doing different things with theirs than mine. And also at the beginning of the round, we got to find out what's our first event going to be. It's not actually alms to the poor, which would have been an opportunity to give money or royal favors to get more citizenry points. That's out. Our first event is actually... Uh, clearing the old forest. Interesting thing about this game is all the events are good. They're opportunities or just resources because Amara is a land of plenty. Uh, there's lots of wealth and resources to go around, which is why the theme is what it is. But anyway, so we're clearing the old forest, which means every player gets one piece of lumber. Although the dummy player doesn't care about such things. So I've got a piece of lumber as well. Well, that's very interesting. Now, what am I going to be doing for my three turns of the first round? Okay. 
And in the solo game, I don't really worry about what the dummy's doing at all. The dummy just does some automatic stuff at the end of a round, starting with round two. So I've got one full round before the dummy starts gobbling up potential scoring opportunities for me. Anyway, though, so what do we got here? I can get some textiles, I can get some lumber, or I can activate any of the four regions of the city, even if my counselor isn't in that. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pick one of these, and I, I think, hmm, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick getting lumber. So, I, one of the things I'm going to do this turn is get another lumber to join the resources I've already got. But I have to put this in one of three slots. Uh, and this will indicate how many spaces I'm going to move one of my counselors on their rondelle so I can do that region action as well. And I think I'm going to do the number two here. So I get my extra lumber. So yeah, huh? I am a lumber fool. And I move two. I could move my city counselor one, two, so you could come over here to the market, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to move my countryside counselor, one, two, to come over here and activate this region, which is where I can make cloth. Right. Um, but I'm not going to do that immediately because during my turn, I do movement actions, I do card actions, and I do bonus actions as well. And the rules are very clear. They say you can do the bonus action whenever you want. And so, since they don't say otherwise, I'm assuming that means I can interrupt an existing action to do a bonus action. So I'm halfway through my movement. I've moved. I'm supposed to come over here specifically to get cloth. Uh, to you know, to add to my resources, but I'm going to interrupt this to do a bonus action. And the three bonus actions are recruit advisors, um, you know, hire craftsmen, or uh, rise in noble rank. Right. So I can do any of these three. I can do each of them once per turn. Right now, I'm going to recruit a craftsman. Since my countryside ca um, counselor is over here, I could put a craftsman in this house, this house, or this house. And I've got two stone and a lumber. So I could go into this house or this house. What do I want to hold on to? That stone and that lumber? I think I want to hold on to the lumber. So I'm going to pay the stone I started with and the lumber I got from the clearing the old forest to put my first craftsman which gets me one citizen point. Yeehaw! All right. Uh, so I've got a job for a new immigrant. Hooray! And I'm going to put him in this house. And now I'm going to continue with the movement action. Because I've got a, a craftsman here, I get to get two cloth. I always come here, or I always get one cloth. But for every craftsman, I have a choice. Get an additional cloth or give up grain to turn it into bread. That's so The craftsman can always turn grain into bread, but they can also double or triple or quadruple what you're doing. I'm going to get myself some more cloth because I don't have any grain yet. So... I ended up getting two cloth this turn. Is that right? Is that what I wanted to do? Oh. You know what? Actually, I'm going to have held on to my stone and use that double lumber instead. I think that makes a bit more sense. Anyway, so I've come here. I've gotten two cloth, uh, one for me in here, one for my craftsman. And I'm still not done yet. I've now finished my movement action and my card action. And I've done one of my three bonus actions. I'm going to do another bonus action right now, which is I'm going to hire a counselor. And uh, if I look, uh, you know, these were all randomly chosen. Every time you play, you're going to get a different starting collection plus a different order of replacements that will come in. And I have two cloth and a stone now, which means I could hire the landlord or the tool maker or the mayoress. I could get any of those and they would all give me different effects for the rest of the game. Well, first of all, the mayoress would immediately give me five citizenship points and in the future, whenever I visit the palace, I can earn extra points or extra citizenship points, which is pretty cool. If I go for the landlord, I'll get three citizen points immediately and for the rest of the game, oh no, for the rest of the game, once per turn, I can turn a cloth into five building points, but I have to give up one citizenship point if I have the landlord power, or I can do the toolmaker, which will only give me two citizens, but for the rest of the game, whenever I get more building points, which remember is one of my two metrics, I earn an extra two above and beyond what I was supposed to earn. So, I could get any of those. I'm going to recruit one of these advisors. And if the housing was lower as part of set, remember I said you can, uh, you know, it's variable how, however, how much housing you have to earn to, you know, beat your citizenry score. I'd probably go for one of them that allows me to do housing better. But since I'm starting out with easier housing, I'm going to get the mayoress. 
So she joins me right here by my side for the rest of the game with this ongoing ability. First of all, I get five more. So I'm up to six citizenship points, and I've got this permanent ability. Whenever I visit the palace and um, donate goods to the uh, to the crown, I get two additional points in addition to my normal reward. So that's very, very cool. That means I'm going to be wanting to visit the palace sooner than later. And that was it, folks. That was my turn. Uh, the only thing I didn't do, uh, although I could have, if I had a if I had a favor, a royal favor, a ring of of royalty, I could have also increased uh, my stature and become a baron, which is worth three citizens. Once I become a baron later on, I can spend a ring and a coin to become a count or countess and get six points, and then a prince, uh, a marquis, or a duke, or you know, female versions of all of them, to get more and more citizens. So this is one opportunity for scoring points if I pay those really rich, high value rewards of royal royal favors and money. All right, but I don't have any of those right now, so I'm not doing that action. My first turn is over. And now if I was playing with more players, everybody else in turn order would pick a card, put it in the one, two, three slot, and do whatever they're going to do. And then eventually it would come back around to me, and I get to go again. So this is going to give me a cloth, um, which is good because I'm totally out of resources. And this one allows me to activate any region in the town, even if I'm not standing there. Let's see, I think... I think I'll get some cloth. Right, but I have to decide. Okay, if I'm going to get some cloth, am I going to? Which of my counselors am I going to move one or three spaces? If I move uh, the countryside, I'll move one. I'll get some cloth, and I'll end up getting some lumber. If I come over here and move my counselor one, I'll come over here to the working region where I have the opportunity to give up stone to get housing and citizen benefits, and give up bread and get citizen benefits, and give up lumber to get housing benefits. I don't have any of those resources, so I don't want to move one. Do I want to move three? If I go one, two, three, hey, I'd be over in the um, zone where I could uh, donate to the crown, which I want to do because I get extra points when I donate to the crown. But here's the deal. To donate to the crown, right now at the beginning of the game, it's one lumber, one wheat, two cloth, or two stone. And if I play this, I'm going to have one cloth, but I won't have the other cloth I need. I mean, basically... Yeah. yeah, I need more cloth. All right, but I just got rid of all my cloth to get the mayoress on my side. Let's see here. If I, however, if I go like this, let's say I'm going to go like this. So I'm going to get one cloth for playing the card, and now one of my counselors will move three spaces. I'll move my countryside counselor three spaces. One, two, three, and that gets me some grain. And nothing else because I don't have anybody here and I'm not moving anybody into any of those houses. So that was my second turn. Much quicker than my first turn. Not quite as elaborate. I do not have the resources to move another craftsman in. I don't have the resources to do that. And I don't have the resources to... So my second turn was very quick. My third and final turn will be... Uh, here. So I'm going to get to activate a city action, and and I can do these in any order I want. I can do the movement action first or the card action. I'm going to do the card action first. I'm going to move one. Uh, and hey, since I've come here, boom, I get two cloth. Or I get one cloth, and I can turn the grain I just picked up into a bread. That's what I'm going to do. So now I'm collecting some bread as well. Okay. And I do not have two lumber or a lumber and a wheat to be able to move another craftsman in. So I did two actions there. And I'm done with my movement. Now I'll do my main card, which is even though my city councilor hasn't moved at all, I can activate any of the four regions. I will activate the palace region where they want two cloth, which it just so happens I've got. So I'll spend that, and now the cloth donation increases to three, but before that happens, I get the benefit. For making this donation, I get one royal favor. Okay. Also, while I'm here, if I had any knowledge, i.e. books, that I can get by do making donations to the church, I could actually spend that to get a housing bonus. I'm not here for that. I'm here primarily to give up goods, to get a you know the royal favor, plus... I also get two more points. Boom, boom. And you know what? Before my turn is over, I'm going to do another bonus action. I'm going to spend that royal favor to get my first noble rank. I have become a baron, which gets me three more. One, two, three. And this is kind of cool. I go on ahead and I slide this under my board so that it shows the little crown I am wearing. 
as, as a brand new Baron of the land who's best friends with Amaris. And right off the bat, in my first round, I have earned 11 citizen points, although I've earned no housing points so far. Let's see. Yeah, that was a pretty good turn, and I've still got some bread. Now, I want to save this bread up, because if I come over here to the work zone, I want to have one, two, or three bread to activate to get um, 6, 12, or 18 citizen points. So, as you might imagine, I want to get some more bread um, and, and cash that in for a ton of citizen points before this starts rotating. Because over time, as more and more bread gets donated, just like um, when you're donating to royalty or the clergy, the rewards um, come down fairly quickly. All right. So anyway, that was it. My round is over. I, if I was playing with more players, I would finish out their turns. And then at the end of the round, if we had an event, uh, some of the events, well, like uh, Alms for the Poor, it's at the end of the round. This is when you could give up a coin or a ring to get four citizens. Uh, that's not happening. There is no end of round. So we're finished. The turn order changes. The next player becomes start player. And for that, we get rid of these cards. We're done with them. We draw three more. Everybody does this. Although you keep them secret, nobody knows what you can do. And this turn, I've got the get a free royalty favor, move an extra space. So I get to do two movement. If I come here, I move three and then do an action, and then move one and do an action. And this one to convert goods into coins, which are wild cards. Uh, coins, you need them to work your way up at the higher levels of nobility, but a coin can always stand in for any of the regular resources. So that's very nice. So I know what my next three cards are. I'm going to be programming into these slots like normal. And at the end of the second round is when the dummy player will start going. The dummy player will automatically make these fall. The dummy player will automatically start grabbing royalty. And that's denying me opportunities for points because the first player to be the count gets six. The second player only gets five, and so on. And uh, that's all the dummy player does. At the end of every round, rounds two, three, four, five, and six, they just gobble up more and more resources and score more and more points. They don't do anything along the way. And folks, if you want to watch a little bit more, if you'd like to see another round or two, you might want to hit that eye to go and uh, up in the top right corner to go watch the extended playthrough, or instead, you can go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.